What you are watching is stage one of the first part of a computer simulation of human culture and the beginning of what will be a long project aimed at modeling the key aspects of all human societies. The simulation will gradually increase its complexity and scope with each successive stage of each part. Starting with this part A, which will model a small-scale traditional culture and then move on to modeling the transition to a modern culture with its final complex form. The intention is to approximate the underlying processes that create, maintain, and change all human cultures. And importantly, this simulation is only possible because it's based on a new theoretical perspective concerning the relationship between human brain biology and culture, which was outlined in the previous videos in this series. There's a link in the description. So in order to get a sense of what you are about to watch, it's necessary to first of all be aware of the basics of this new perspective. It's fairly simple really and can be summarized as follows. All human cultures at all times in human history have seven main areas of activity. There's the arts, which include the visual, music, and culinary arts in all their many and varied forms. There's the mode of production of a culture, which is the way in which a population collects, processes, and distributes resources. This can vary from hunting and gathering to pastoralism and agrarianism to industrialization and an information economy. Next we have storytelling, which can take the form of verbal storytelling, theater, puppetry, or film and television. We also have trade and business activity, with all its many and varied marketplaces, including the online marketplace of today. Next we see the ever-present nurturing and welfare activities of human cultures, which includes all the various types of caregiving and teaching practices. We also see warfare and policing activities manifesting across all human populations throughout history. And finally, we have the cultural activities associated with metaphysics, which takes the form of many different types of belief systems. How then have these seven main types of cultural activities actually arisen? Well, the suggestion here is that it's a consequence of the evolved characteristics of the human brain. The human brain can be categorized into seven major types of brain activity, each of which manifests as a key aspect of human culture. First, we have the areas of the brain responsible for sensory awareness. This category of brain activity includes all the neurochemical processes associated with the senses. Sensations of sight, sound, smell, touch and taste. And these collectively manifest as the cultural arts. From the visual arts, to music, and the culinary arts. Next we have the areas of the brain associated with rationality. These include spatial recognition, short and long-term memory, logical induction and deduction, and importantly, pattern recognition all of which allow humans to locate and exploit environmental resources in an ongoing manner. As such, this brain activity manifests as the mode of production of all human populations. But for humans to survive, they also need the brain areas associated with social intelligence in order to function and reproduce effectively in social groups. This collection of cognitive processes includes the ability to recognize the emotional states and motivations of others and to recognize and respond to group hierarchy through an ability to interact with specific individuals in an appropriate way. Social intelligence initially manifests as gossip, but it eventually takes the form of all types of human storytelling. From individual performance storytelling to theater, puppetry, film and television. Next we have the neurochemical processes associated with self-awareness. These include an awareness of self-survival and sensations of individuality and personal well-being. 
self-awareness manifests as business enterprise. At the opposite extreme to self-awareness, we have the areas of the brain associated with what can be called other awareness. These neurochemical processes include sensations of altruism and caregiving, and a general awareness of the health and condition of others. Not surprisingly then, these brain processes manifest as all the nurturing and welfare practices and institutions of human populations. From child care, to schools, to healthcare centers, and hospitals. Next we have areas of the human brain associated with what can be referred to as dominance. From an individual point of view, these neurochemical processes trigger behaviors such as aggression and dominance. However, from a population perspective, dominance is really about the desire to control the social and physical environment. And, as such, dominance manifests as all the warfare and policing practices and institutions of human culture. And finally, we have the metaphysics area of the human brain, which is composed of neurochemical processes, which ironically, are a consequence of rational brain processes. Once humans evolved rationality, they would also have acquired a cognitive awareness of non-rationality. And in order to deal with the anxiety that came from this awareness, metaphysics neurochemical processes manifested as the belief systems of a population with associated rituals and institutions. So how then did these seven key areas of human brain activity actually manifest as the key areas of culture? a process which can be referred to as neurochemical emergence. Well, while every individual uses all of the neurochemical processes of their brain every day in an ongoing manner, nevertheless, each individual has a preference or inclination to use one particular set of neurochemical processes more than the others. For example, some people prefer to stimulate and use their rational processes while others prefer to stimulate and use their other awareness, and still others, the sensory awareness processes of their brain, and so on. And individuals with a common neurochemical preference naturally group together in order to collectively stimulate their preferred brain area. And the way in which these groups stimulate each other's preferred neurochemical processes is through what can be referred to as items of mediation. Items of mediation are all the objects, sounds, practices, and ideas that stimulate corresponding areas of human brains. They act to mediate between the brains of humans, as does any component of culture. So the term is actually just a special way of talking about all the components of culture. Here's a few quick examples of the seven main types of items of mediation. Items of mediation are an important part of the computer simulation, and we'll look at them in more detail when we're running the simulation. So to quickly summarize what we've covered. The seven main activities of human culture are a consequence of the activities of the seven main groups of human populations. These groups create and use specific items of mediation to stimulate the preferred neurochemical processes of their brains. And in doing so, they create all the artifacts, practices, and ideas of human culture. And, in turn, these groups are formed as a natural consequence of the seven key neurochemical processes of the human brain.
and the preference every individual has to stimulate one area of their brain more than the others. So that's basically all you'll need to be aware of now. In order to follow what's presented in stage one of the simulation. So let's return to the simulation. To begin, let's imagine a hypothetical situation where a group of 50 people have been stranded on an island. Say after a shipwreck. It's about 200 years ago, so they don't have any modern communication system and they know they have little chance of being rescued. All they have are the clothes on their backs, their language, and the neurochemical processes of their brains. Let's simulate how these humans would survive and eventually thrive on the island. We'll represent these humans in the following way. First of all, we'll refer to them as humes which is short for humans. The plural is humes and the singular is hume. Each hume has a number of characteristics. They have a gender, an age, and importantly, the first two neurochemical preferences of their brains are represented by the color of the clothing they wear. The color of their top represents their first neurochemical preference and their lower piece of clothing represents their second preference. So for example, this female Hume has a first preference for other awareness and a second preference for metaphysics. And this male has a first preference for social intelligence and a second preference for rationality. So let's actually start the simulation. The program will be paused every so often, and this white pointer will be used to indicate the main things that are happening, as quite a lot is often occurring all at once. The Humes have done an initial scout of the island and found four food sources. There's fish in the ocean, coconut trees spread across the island, berry trees, and yam trees. For those not familiar with yams, they're a potato-type plant, which is a common food source on many islands. All the food sources require tools to access them, except for the berries. The fish need a spear or net to catch them. The yams need a digging stick to dig them up. And the coconuts need a stone axe to break them open. And a range of baskets are needed of different sizes to carry the food the long distances to the common collection area as none of the distances in the simulation are to scale. All the various totals of tools made and food collected will be shown by these counters. First, we see that most of the humes are over at the berry trees. This is because berries are the only food they can eat at the moment without any tools. So the humes need food collection tools to be made as soon as possible. So they can get access to the other food sources. These types of tools, these rational items of mediation, are made by humes with a first neurochemical preference for rationality. So the blue top male humes get together to make the tools they need to catch fish and collect coconuts. And the rational female humes get together to make food collection tools to dig up and collect yams and berries. It's important to note at this point that because the first objective of the simulation is to accurately model a traditional culture and then to move on to modeling the transition to a modern culture. We need to assume here that there would be a clear division of labor based on gender in this traditional situation. Hence the different roles here. So let's continue running the program. The simulation is broken up into time intervals, which are shown here. There's a morning, afternoon, and evening time interval. And then we have the normal passage of days and weeks. At the end of each time interval, certain activities have been completed, and the results are then shown in the counts. So at the end of the first morning period, we see that the male and female rational humes have made these food collection tools. Then at each mealtime, all the humes return to this central location and bring all the food they have collected. 
This central location will become the future care center. So after the meal, which would just be berries at this time, the humes now have some tools to catch and collect food. The male humes have taken what tools are available and gone to the appropriate location where that particular tool can be used to gather food. Those with nets or spears go to the fishing area and those with an axe and small basket go to the coconut trees. The female humes with a large basket or digging stick go to the yam trees and those with a medium-sized basket go to the berry trees. The humes who don't have a tool at this stage go to the various areas and help out the humes who do have tools. In the meantime, during the afternoon period, the rational male and female humes continue to make tools. Now it's evening and normally there is little or no food collection done. But at this survival stage, we see them all once again, collecting food. With the rational humes joining in the food collection process. And we now see more tools available, which means larger amounts of food can be caught and collected. Each morning, the humes have a meal of berries and coconuts. So once again we see the tool making and food collection processes occurring. The reason these females are at the care center area is that all females with a first or second neurochemical preference of other awareness do the cooking. So all the females with a green top or green bottom piece of clothing. The humes only eat cooked yams and fish. So whenever there's raw yams and fish available, the females cook them. The humes eat berries and coconuts for breakfast. Berries, coconuts, and cooked yams for the midday meal. And just cooked yams and fish for the evening meal. And they prefer a balanced diet. So if berries and coconuts are available in the morning, they will take a helping of each. And likewise, for the food at the midday and evening meals. If they can't get a balance, they just eat what foods are currently available. So if you noticed here, the cooked fish changed from okay to low because of the evening meal. You'll see an ongoing interplay between the level of cooked fish and cooked yams and raw fish and yams. And the amount of food cooked depends on how many cooking females are at the care center at any one time. The food and tools are gradually increasing. There are three levels of food storage, low, okay, and full. And each has a range of values, which affects the food collecting behavior of the humes, as we will see. And there's a limit on the number of tools made based on the population size. Each time period, morning, afternoon, and evening, is about four hours long which is why you're seeing this delay. And just before the end of each time period, the counters are updated based on the number of humes at each location and the activities they were engaged in. The nets can catch 12 fish in a time period. The spears, five fish. The large baskets can carry 10 coconuts and the small ones, three coconuts. We'll assume that all the food sources are unlimited at this stage. The large baskets of the females can hold 25 yams. And the digging sticks can dig up 20 yams in a time interval. The medium-sized baskets can hold 15 lots of berries. Once all the male food collection tools have been made, the rational humes start making tools to construct buildings with. They make large stone axes to chop down coconut trees and stone hammers and chisels to work the wood. So now that the food storages have all reached a reasonable level, the humes are free to do other things in the evening.
the Humes with a first preference for other awareness, group together at what will be the care center. Those with a first preference for metaphysics, group together at the future worship center. And all the other Humes socialize at the performance area, which is where the sensory awareness and social intelligence Humes will put on a performance every Friday and Saturday night. One dominance Hume is always on guard in the evening. This is where the fort will be built. All the future buildings are manifestations of the neurochemical preferences of each group. And when the female rational Humes have made all their food collection tools, they start making medical equipment for the female caregivers. Once the rational Humes have made enough construction tools, which is based on the number of male rational Humes in the population, they start constructing buildings. There's a task list which prioritizes the order of task. The first task on the list is the building of the care center, where all the Humes eat and sleep. Now it's Friday night, when the sensory awareness Humes put on a performance for all the Humes. They haven't had time during this survival mode to make instruments or costumes, so they just sing for the audience. The construction progress of a building is updated each morning. So we see half of the care center build from yesterday's work. There'll only be two stages of construction for all the buildings, half built and fully built. It's worth pointing out why certain humes are in particular locations at this time. The raw fish and coconut levels are currently at the lower end of the OK level. Which is why the male humes are collecting them. But because the berries are at the higher end of the OK level, not all the female humes need to be collecting them. So just the females with a second preference for rationality are collecting berries. And those females with a second preference of other awareness are at the care center helping out with cooking, or as we will see in future stages, caring for the sick and injured. This female Hume has a first preference for metaphysics so she's at the worship area. This female has a first preference of sensory awareness and is therefore at the performance area. And the reason this dominance female is here, is due to the fact that we are dealing with a traditional culture where women are generally not engaged in dominance activities. So her second preference of social intelligence would put her at the performance area. This just gives you an indication of the logic that is occurring behind the scenes. These choices of where to place each hume at what time of day are to some extent arbitrary, but the intention is to make it as realistic as possible. And the decision of where to put them can be adjusted in later stages. If the simulation is not modeling real-world cultures well. On Saturday night the social intelligence Humes put on a storytelling performance. But at this time they haven't got any costumes made, so they would probably just tell, or act out, a simple story. Once a week, on a Sunday morning, the metaphysics Humes conduct a worship service for all the Humes. And the senior male Hume would wear a robe and hat on this occasion. The robe and hat are items of mediation made by the metaphysics Humes that manifest and stimulate the metaphysics neurochemical processes of their brains and the brains of the audience. Then in the afternoon they would all go to their preferred areas and make their corresponding items of mediation. So we see that the sensory awareness humes now have musical instruments. A wooden flute and a drum. On a Sunday evening, they all go to the care center. There's no food collection on a Sunday, which is another reason why they need to store large amounts of food and no construction work. 
The next task on the task list is to build a worship center. The normal routine for the metaphysics humes is for them to have an informal worship service each morning. Except for Sunday. There's only one hume here this morning, due to the food storage levels. In the afternoon they make items of mediation. Once again there's only one hume here this time. There needs to be at least two humes present, in order to make items of mediation. Then in the evening they socialize amongst themselves, or make more items. One more session, and the worship center will be complete. The construction workers have been called away to do fishing, because the raw fish level is low. Each building has a set number of construction hours, which have been greatly reduced for the sake of this video. And the number of construction humes, at a building site, determines how many construction hours are completed in a time interval. So the worship center is now complete, from that morning session of work. And the builders have moved on to constructing their own tool shed. Which is the next task on the list. The tool shed will become the basis for future factories. It's where rational items of mediation are made by humes, collectively using their rational neurochemical processes. By the way, this made up metaphysic symbol is simply being used here, to represent all the metaphysics belief systems, of human cultures. And it becomes the focal point of their altar or shrine. So the first half of the tool shed has been completed. It'll have a dirt floor. Now that all the medical tools have been made, and the food storage and cooked food levels are okay, the other awareness female humes are free to collect medicinal herbs from this area. And also herbs to improve the taste of food. The medicinal plant count has now increased. Normal routine here. The tool sheds complete, and the rational humes move on to building the fort. The female other awareness humes, are still collecting medicinal plants and herbs. So now on this second Friday night, the sensory humes have costumes and musical instruments. So they can put on a dress performance. The females use their voices as musical instruments. Half the fort is completed. The medicinal plant storage is full now. And because there's no caring for the sick or injured, in this stage one. It'll remain full.
Having the costumes also allows for the social intelligence Humes to put on a fully dressed play every Saturday night. And because we're dealing with a traditional culture, the play would be some type of morality play meant to instruct the audience on how to behave correctly. Morality plays are items of mediation that are manifestations of other awareness and social intelligence. But more on this and other types of fiction in later stages. The fort's completed. It's more of a watchtower at this stage. But it'll become the fort and prison later. Once again on a Sunday, we see them all going to their preferred areas. And the dominance female humes going to a location based on their second neurochemical preference. The final construction project is the performance stage. Once again, the construction workers are called away to do fishing. But the raw fish level remains low. This is because the female humes cooked enough fish to fill up the cooked fish storage. So the rational humes have to go back to doing fishing. The performance stage is now half complete. There are nine metaphysics humes in total. Not all of them are currently here and they each make an icon, offering bowl and plate for themselves. The icons would be small versions of the purple circle, which they would wear as a necklace. The purple color could be made from the dye of berries. It's worth noting that each particular item of mediation takes varying numbers of humes to make it. For example, it takes three humes to make a fishing net, and two humes to make a large basket or spear but only one hume to make a small basket. And it takes three female humes to make one large basket, but only one to make a digging stick. And so on for all the items made by each group. This in turn affects the order in which items are made, as it depends on how many humes are present at a location at a particular time. And the reason why extra tools have not been made for these humes is that it requires two humes to effectively use a net for fishing. So they would help the humes who do have nets. And they can also do other food collection tasks. This will be the final construction period for the stage. You might be wondering why this self-awareness hume is in this location and why it is that there is no actual area for the self-awareness humes. In traditional cultures, self-awareness doesn't manifest at the cultural level to any great degree. The dominant manifestation is always other awareness, as there is a sense of collective organization and collaboration. And the emphasis is on sharing and mutual obligation, which is antagonistic to self-awareness. So in this type of culture, individuals with a strong neurochemical preference for self-awareness aren't permitted to group together and manifest their preference as items of mediation. Normally in a traditional culture, this individual would probably be engaged in some type of community trade of some form. But that isn't possible at the moment. So these types of humes are currently at a loose end. But they will emerge as a dominant cultural group when we simulate the transition to a modern society in later stages. For the time being, these humes are placed somewhat randomly. The stage is now complete. The delay was due to the workers being called away to do fishing. 
The normal routine for the sensory awareness and social intelligence humes is to spend the morning making their items of mediation, such as musical instruments, costumes, props and backgrounds, which they use for their performances. In the afternoon, the sensory awareness humes practice playing music and singing. And the social intelligence humes rehearse the performances they plan to put on every Saturday night. Then on weekday evenings they informally entertain the other humes with music, singing, and storytelling. Friday and Saturday nights are performance nights. The routine for the dominance humes is as follows. As you might have already noticed, they line up in the morning. This is to indicate that they are engaging in dominance rituals, such as coordinated exercises or marching. In the afternoon, they have been making items of mediation, such as spears and ropes, to control and restrain other humes, if necessary. And in the evening, as mentioned, one of them is always on guard, while the rest of them go to the performance center. Normal Saturday Routine When the dominance humes have made one spear and rope, for each of them, in this case five, they then go on patrol around the island in the afternoon, as we'll see tomorrow. So now we have all the buildings constructed, and all the items of mediation made, for a population of this size, and with this distribution of neurochemical preferences. And we see here that the performance humes now have a stage to perform on. Both on a Friday and Saturday night. In full costume. Normal Sunday morning routine. So here we see the dominance humes, going on patrol in pairs in the afternoon. So all of these humes, will continue now to act out this routine, according to the limited parameters and functions of this stage of the simulation. It's worth making a few final points now, about the simple economy they have created. The actual details here, of what types of tools are made, in order to collect and catch what types of foods, is not really that important. The main idea, is that we see a rational and logical set of operations and procedures, that make food collection, food processing, and food distribution possible. Which in turn, forms the basis of their simple mode of subsistence. The humes that make tools, have to act in a rational manner, in order to make effective tools. The humes that use the tools to catch and collect food have to do so in a logical manner. And the procedures of transporting the food to a central location and preparing and cooking it must be done according to a logical and rational sequence of events. We take these fundamental processes for granted. But they're the remarkable manifestation of the rational neurochemical processes of the human brain. And result in the formation of one of the key aspects of culture. The economy. We've covered quite a lot now in this video, so we'll end it here. We've seen how we can simulate the process by which a group of 50 humans that are hypothetically stranded on an island can create a simple economy and recreate a basic version of their culture using island resources through the manifestation of the neurochemical processes of their brains. And as mentioned, this is the start of a long and large simulation project.
Next we'll move on to stage 2. Until then, bye for now.